This video is sponsored by Surfshark. More on that later. Here's the sitch. You've got a Warhammer 40k army and you got your battle ready scheme figured out. It's quick, it's dirty, and it allows you to plow through your army. Inevitably, you're going to buy a fancy schmancy character that you might want to look fancy and schmancy, of course. This model is too good for your peasant-like battle ready scheme. You gotta spruce it up. I'm gonna show you in this video how I'd go about taking a simpler scheme and spicing it up for your special models. For this video, I'll be taking my Sister of Battle scheme that I showed off in a previous video and upgrading it for Tariana Palos, probably the coolest Sister of Battle model out there. Let's do it. Shout out to Andrew Walker for supplying me with this model. Thanks, Andrew. Step one is to figure out what I had to call the spirit of the paint job. What parts of the paint job are critical and contribute to the overall feel, the feel, the feel, the feel of the model? I promise we won't get too much more artsy than that. Oftentimes, this goes way beyond just paint selection. For instance, my sister battle scheme includes a variety of weathering, so maybe I'd want Tariana to also have weathered armor. Looking at my paint plan for this model, I'd say the critical ideas are metallic red, black fabric, cream details, a hot pink spot color, of course, accessory metallics that are gold and silver, and an overall weathered appearance. If I had to dissolve it even further, I'd say that I'm generally sticking to the warm side of the color wheel. So if I were going to add in another color, it might mesh better if it were also warm. Also, the most important colors are probably the red metallic and the black fabric because they take up the most space on the model. If I were to snip some ideas from this scheme, it'd probably be the ones that are less critical. Cool. We've melted down our scheme into this universe we want it to exist inside. Now, let's go about taking it to the next level. Side note, it looks like Games Workshop has been taking sprue layout notes from Malifo. I wonder if I can buy Teriana Pelos' bangs in the Bits aftermarket. Damn it! For the battle-ready red armor, it was a simple process of a silver base coat, a red wash, and then some silver sponging. I think the best way to improve this would be to increase the contrast and also make our weathering more intentional. So let's give that a shot. We'll begin by taking a silver color and mixing in a dark brown acrylic paint. This will dull down the metallic and also make it darker. You might ask why I used brown instead of black here. Well, eventually we'll be covering the model in translucent red, and I felt like having some warmth in our shadows would be nice versus just using straight up boring black. Do I have any idea if the end result would look any different if I used black versus dark brown? No, absolutely not. No clue. <laughs> we can use this as our base coat for the red armor, and from here we can start to work in some highlights. Using less and less of that acrylic paint and more and more metallic paint, our silver begins to get shinier and also brighter. While working up this highlight, I'm not going for a super sexy blended effect. Instead, I'm hiding my transitions with dots and little micro scratches with the very tip of my brush. This idea is cool because it allows us to simultaneously highlight and shade in this more difficult way while still existing in the same universe as our other weathered battle sister. We want to take this highlighting and shading to a very contrasty place and that'll become obvious why in a second. I also made sure to recess shade the various details with my darkest shadow color. This means I won't need to do much future recess shading. When our sister's silver is sufficiently seasoned, we can now move on to our next step, which is to cover up all of our hard work in a translucent red color and pray to the emperor that all of it was not in vain. I was tempted to try out something like Tamiya Clear Red for this job, but I instead went with what I used in the previous video, GW's Contrast Paint Flesh Terror Red. I was a little bit scared that the Tamir clear red would be slightly off. Since metallic red is a critical color of our scheme, I didn't want to mess about. I did, however, apply it through an airbrush instead of a brush. Because I've already established all of my highlights and my shadows with my undercoat, I don't need to douse the model in this stuff to have it act like a wash, which is what contrast paint is normally applied like. I applied this slowly and with multiple layers of thin down flesh terror red. Because I went air quotes over the top with my contrast, I can afford to lose some while applying this color. I've never done this before, so I don't know what it's going to look like, which illustrates another reason I love painting characters for 40K. You can experiment and grow as a miniature painter while still painting up cool stuff for your army. Maybe I can discover small new ideas that will impact the future troops that I paint. 
Luckily, after a few thin layers of flesh terra red, it looks pretty good and we can move on to the final step. With some black, I'll paint in some dings and scratches along the raised edge of the armor. In the battle ready scheme, I used a sponge and applied this weathering step haphazardly. But, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I'm being more intentional now, which hopefully ends in a better result. Sometimes trying new things out actually results in the process taking longer and looking worse, but that's okay. We'll get better each time we try. I took the same bright silver as I used on my undercoat and highlighted beneath some of those black scratches I just added and also applied some silver to various edges. While that work on the weathering, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Surfshark. Privacy is a weird thing. You kind of take it for granted until your privacy gets violated. In a world where the landscape of the internet is changing constantly, maintaining some form of privacy in the form of anonymity is important. Surfshark is a VPN provider looking to offer that anonymity by encrypting your personal information that often gets mined without your knowledge in addition to all sorts of other features. Surfshark enables you to save on roaming mobile charges via being able to mask your location on your phone and using that same feature on any device, you can watch Netflix content available in any country at any time. You could then use that ability to watch The Social Dilemma on Netflix, which make you want to use your VPN even more. Surfshark also protects your identity while being able to monitor your email and password usage across the internet to inform you when you've been compromised. Use promo code MINIAC to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee so there's no risk. The link is in the video description. All right, back to painting. With the weathering step complete, that should finish up the red armor. Let's move on to the black cloth. In the previous paint job, I did a really simple edge highlight on the cloth, so a really easy improvement would be to highlight this volumetrically, which is a really fancy word that simply means what it would look like in real life. This means we're going to consider all the shapes and volumes in the fabric and highlight and shade it accordingly. If you need help with that idea, I've linked a video in the description that will walk you through the process. Just like the red armor, I also applied the highlights in a scratchy way instead of a smooth way to really emphasize the weather feel of the entire model, not just one part. Another improvement opportunity of the black cloth of the previous Battle Sister was that there's just so much of it. So let's break it up by painting the inside of the cloth a different color. Like I mentioned earlier, if we plan on adding another color to our scheme, it might help to stick to a warm tone. Alternatively, a neutral color like gray might also work, but I went with a maroon color. It's warm, and while it may seem a little bright right now, once I apply some weathering to the bottom of the cloth, it'll tone it down nicely. Although trust me, I wanted this hot pink to be as hot as it could be. The last area where we can definitely improve is the face. The last time I painted a Sister of Battle, it uh, did not turn out so good. Apparently with my paint job, I discovered the missing link. I learned some lessons and I'd like to apply them now. One of the problems that I caused for myself was that I started with a color that was too dark as my base coat. This in turn caused my sister's face to have very strongly defined features and women often have softer features. So I started with a lighter skin tone this time, which would end up being my darkest shadow. Once I had the base coat done, I worked on the eyes, starting with a base coat of dark brown. You might make a mistake at this point, but that's totally okay because we've only base coated the flesh color, so you can just paint right over it if you have any mistakes. Then, I fill in the eyes with some off-white yellow, making sure to not cover up the dark brown. I want some separation between the eyes and the skin. Lastly, with a dark maroon color, I paint in some irises, and I'm all done, and can start highlighting the flesh. I start by mixing in some off-white yellow and white into my original base color. With this new mixture, I start applying highlights fairly heavy-handedly, at first targeting her cheeks, nose, forehead, chin, and jawline. As I mix in more and more of that off-white and white into the flesh tone, the size that I operate in shrinks more and more. Eventually, I'm targeting the very tip of her nose and nostrils, the very peaks of that scrunchy thing below her nose, the skin right below and next to her eye, and more. Lastly, with some watered down red paint, I glaze some warmth back into her cheeks. Highlighting with white often can result in someone looking a little more dead than you intended for, so it helps to bring some liveliness back. Comparing my two Sister of Battle face attempts, I think I made some improvement. However, I have more room to grow up because I handed it off to my wife and the first thing she said was, This looks like a man. The last of the details didn't get much special treatment, so we'll fast forward through that part of the model.
That's Sister Teriana Palos all finished up. If I could summarize my thoughts on painting a character for your 40k army, it'd be to stick to your palette for approximately 85% of the model and to not add any zany colors. Figure out the feel of the model and experiment with techniques you think will get you there. Does your model have a weathered appearance? Try out stippling. Maybe you would like some creamy blends on your space marines? Give wet blending a shot. I know it might seem a little backwards to experiment on miniatures that you care about, but I find it's helpful to do it this way when I'm working on only one miniature as opposed to 10 at a time. This model will not be staying with me. I'm shipping it off to the Nova Open Charitable Foundation. It will be part of the Miniac 100K subscriber charity event that you guys all work so hard on. If you want to see it for yourself, I'll supply a link to the NOCF's current raffles. This one should be live by October 15th or near there. I hope this video has encouraged you to take your battle ready schemes to the next level for your characters in your army. Don't forget to experiment with different techniques and materials when doing this as well. Maybe it won't turn out, but that's okay. Life moves on and we acquire more plastic crack than we know what to do with. You can take your learned lesson and apply them to your new minis in the future. That's going to do it for this one, guys. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you like the channel and you want to support it, there are a number of ways that you can do it. Namely, a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards, like a Discord server where you and I can hang out any day of the week and chat about your miniature painting projects, or how Sisters of Battle are just female space marines. You can also support me by buying hobby equipment that I recommend in the description below, or buying the model that I produce called The Duchess, along with a digital course that teaches you how to paint the model in full. All things linked in the video description. Subscribe or die! But most importantly, don't forget to pay my minis!